Welcome back, everyone here to Bronx Talks today. I got a very special video for you guys. We are going to be talking about the New York Yankees. As we know, the New York Yankees are, are just a flat-out mess right now. Um, they are just pathetic baseball. It's so hard to watch. The offense is abysmal, um, you know, up and down the lineup. There's not many guys hitting at all. Uh, the starting pitching the last couple of days ha has been – pretty pretty bad as well although starting pitching is not totally a, a huge problem it's, it's really the offense but there's just a mess right now and, and there's not many positives to take away um especially from the series and the Yankees got a lot of tough games coming up they think they got like 11 games between the Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays um so it doesn't get any easier um so you know they're gonna they're gonna have to turn it around otherwise you know they could be in a really really tough spot come the uh, come Memorial Day. Um, so Christian, what are your overall thoughts? What are you seeing right now from the Yankees? How are you feeling? Are you optimistic? Are you just like, all right, it's April, one month or fifteen and fourteen, whatever. Let's get healthy. Or are you kind of like, uh, this team doesn't look good. There's a lot of holes on this team. How are you feeling? Really bad. I hate watching the games right now. Like I'm literally trying to find excuses to not watch them, right? Because it the the that bats are terrible, and I'm not gonna pull a boon and start saying that it's April and it's still early, because that's what he would do. That's what the Yankees organization does. No, they've played 29 games and they're in last place, Ryan. So, and this is a good division, all right? They're eight games behind the Rays. And they have four teams to jump. So, like, I I get it's April, but you're you're digging yourself into a deeper hole. And I mean, I get you have guys injured, but this if this is what the team is without Judge and Stanton and Rodon, no Bader, that's a problem. Okay, because yeah. th those four guys are not going to turn this team from a 500 team to you know, a, a World Series contender. So I'm feeling terrible right now, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty concerned, uh, you know, about this team. And, and, you know, in the last few years, I've tried to be more optimistic with, with the Yankees. But, I mean, right now, it just looks really bad. And I get they got major, you know, players injured, major um, players that are part of this team injured. But the, the problem is, they're playing guys with no value and the depth that they have is just awful. And, you know, in 2019, we saw the Yankees and, and um, they had really good depth when everyone got injured guys like Gio Urshela. But right now the Yankees depth is just awful and they're not making any changes to it. And they're, can, they continue to run out the guys like Aaron Hicks, Isaiah kiner Falifa. Franchi Cordero just got uh, sent down, um, you know, but Willie Calhoun, they continue to run these guys out there and they don't produce and they haven't made any changes to it at all. I mean, I know they called up Bowers and that really falls on Brian Cashman. I mean, this team has like a $300 million payroll almost. And, you know, this is, this is your depth. That's not good. That's really, really bad for this to be your depth. Um, you know, it's not even like they have any, you know, prospects that, that they're bringing up. They're just kind of, you know, French Cordero has been released like three times by like four different teams. Willie Calhoun um, has been one of the worst players in Major League Baseball in the last three years. Um, and the depth is just really, really bad. And for a team that has nearly a $300 million payroll, this is the best you can do with your depth. I mean, like you said, Christian, I know they got major players out, and that's not an excuse, and they do, but it shouldn't be an excuse because they are playing such bad baseball. Like you said, it's unwatchable. Yeah, no, I, I, I really hate it. And look, I'm a, I don't want to um, pin myself as like a pessimistic fan. Like August last year, I wasn't panicking. I knew this was a good team. I knew they were kind of mailing it in because. They had a huge lead. They were playing bad, but you know, I still knew this was a good team. I don't know, Ryan. This team hasn't proved anything yet. So, and I almost feel like they think they're still 
you know, even going to the end of last year, it's like they thought they were that first half team, right? They're not. Like they're not even close yeah. to that. And I I I really don't know what to do. Um, I mean, you have the trade yeah. deadline, and I'm kind of scared that we're almost gonna get like blinded by that. Because once they pick it up a little bit and they get one or two bats at the deadline and we're almost going to feel like, all right, we're in this again and we're not. Because I almost feel like yeah. this is the Yankees' true colors right now. Yeah, and, and you really bring up a great point talking about last season, Christian. As you know, the Yankees got off to an absolutely incredible historic start. And then at the halfway point, they were a 500 team. So if you put two and two together, the Yankees are somewhat in the middle of that. And the Yankees did really nothing to improve the offense this year. Um, you know, they re-signed Aaron Judge. You had to do that. Everyone was pushing for Carlos Rodon. You did that. Great move. But the Yankees didn't improve their offense. I mean, Brian Cashman came out last year, Christian, when the Yankees acquired Andrew Benintendi and said the Yankees need more contact in the lineup. They need more contact guys. They need more guys like Benintendi in their lineup. I was really, really pushing the Yankees to get Benintendi. And Cashman was saying they need guys, more guys like Benintendi in the lineup, guys who put the ball in play, guys who, you know, hit for a high average, guys who just make good contact with the baseball. And they don't re-sign Andrew Benintendi and, okay, maybe you didn't want to give him the five years. He didn't really want to be here. But they did nothing to supplement that. Okay? And they did nothing to address left field. And now the Yankees are getting little to none, little to zero production out of left field. Um, Oswaldo Cabrera, I mean, I love Oswaldo Cabrera, but he's looked really, really bad. Um, he's been very disappointing so far. And the Yankees did nothing to upgrade left field. We were saying it, Christian. We made a video, 12 left field options, 12 outfield options for the New York Yankees. They had so many guys they could have went out and got. And they chose to stick, you know, with, with Oswaldo Cabrera, and they, and they really didn't upgrade the offense. And I think that was definitely something that we're now looking back on. And I think it's one of the biggest regrets so far in the early season. Yeah, I mean, I think we were both okay with going with Oswaldo Cabrera just because we thought if he's playing how he is playing right now, all right, we can just um, upgrade at the trade deadline. But, Ryan, I do remember saying I don't love that because I feel like you want to go into the season with nine solid guys, nine guys you can trust. And I don't want to you know, put this on Oswaldo saying we can't trust him, but, look, he is a prospect that kind of came out of nowhere. You know, and he, he started to heat up in the minors, and he he was solid last year. But to, to roll into the season with him as our left fielder, and keep in mind, he came up as a shortstop, I wasn't totally on board. I think the trade deadline should be used to address problems that come up throughout the season, yeah. right? So, uh, for example, stay, say Bader was out for longer, all right, and then we need a center fielder, all right, then we go get that not going to the season saying if this doesn't work out, then we're going to improve. Cause now I almost feel like there's some more holes that need to be addressed and you're only going to make so many trades, right? Like the bench needs to get a lot better. Um, really they just need some more depth. They need a left fielder. Um, hopefully Bader can come back and, and play like last year um, in the postseason. but there's a lot of holes right now. There's a lot. Um, so I don't know. I, Rodon should be coming back, uh, hopefully soon. And I'd like to think yep. that's going to make a difference because I was really excited about that. And with how good Cole has pitched this year, then you can start dreaming about Cole Rodon as a one, two punch in the postseason. Nestor, I don't know. What, how are you feeling about Nestor right now? I mean, he's had some some good starts I mean, today, I mean, yeah. obviously I, I really mean, bad. Yeah, I mean, you can be worried about Nestor Cortez. I, I'm not gonna you know call you out or knock you if you um, if you are, but the Yankees have much bigger problems than a few Nestor Cortez bad starts right now. I mean, I, like 
they have so many problems right now. And I, I guess I'm a little worried, but I'm trying to look right now at, at the bigger problems. And the biggest problems right now are the Yankees aren't generating any offense. I mean, they lost 15 to two today. Uh, you know, the offense is just really, really bad. It's pathetic. And, and Lori uh, C just brought up a point before, um, yeah. you know, ne- nearly a $300 million payroll and the bench is awful going into the season. The Yankees bench was horrible. And I was kind of surprised because it didn't really catch my eye until the season started. And I'm looking on that bench and I'm like, Oh wow, this bench is not good. And now with the injuries to, you know, the starters like Judge, Stan, Bader, et cetera, you're seeing these bench players start. You're seeing guys like Aaron Hicks start games. You're seeing guys like uh, Isaiah kiner Philippus start games. And now we're seeing the results that are happening and they're not playing good baseball. And, you know, the Isaiah kiner Falefa center field thing, you know, is just a joke. Aaron Hicks is, is a joke. Um, so, you know, I, I think, like, what are the Yankees going to do here, Christian, going for? We address the mistakes they made. They were gra- I'm sure the, the Yankees front office has a lot of regrets right now. But we got a whole, you know, giant season to play. We got to think about the now, the, the, the future of this season. What are the Yankees going to do right now to make this team better? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one of my biggest concerns, Ryan, is this team without Aaron Judge. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and I get they weren't playing great, but you know these past few days with Judge out of the lineup, it feels dead. Like, really, yeah. really dead. And it concerns me because what happens if Judge is out for the year? And obviously this injury, he's going to be fine. He's going to be back soon. But something else came up, right? I don't, this team feels like nothing without Judge. And we saw it last year where he was the only reason they were winning some games um, during that one stretch. This team relies on him too much. And that's where I start to put the blame on Cashman. I don't think he's built a good enough team around Aaron Judge. No, he hasn't. Anthony Volpe, he's starting to heat up. I'm really excited for him. I think he's going to have a great Yankee career. But I mean, you go around the lineup, right? Oswald Peraza, yeah, um, he's been struggling a little bit. He's young, right? Glaber Torres, he's in another slump. What's with that, right? It's every yeah. single year that this happens. Yeah, he, he was yeah. One, You're so best right. second base, best hitter um, out of all second basemen for 15 games. Now he's doing terrible, yeah. terrible. He's yeah. in 245. He averaged drop from like 350. Oswaldo Cabrera. What are we doing with him? IKF, Nagashioka, Hicks, uh, LeMayhew, kind of in the middle. I mean, but when all those guys are in your lineup, how do you expect to score? You won't. You're not going to. And, and I think you bring up a, a phenomenal point there with Glaber. It's it, it, it's just like, you know, the, these common Yankee problems that occur year in and year out. I mean, Glaber Torres has kind of been like this, and, and he did progress – uh, a little bit last year, but he, his game is just so confusing. Um, you know, he, he, when Glaber is going well, he's hitting the ball to right field. And then when he seems to get really hot, he just tries to pull the ball like 50 rows in, in the, in the left, in left field bleachers. So where is that coaching aspect telling him to continue his approach? What, why does he keep falling off and, and, and I get it's baseball. I get you're going to be streaky. But why is he taking one step forward, two steps back constantly throughout the season? I mean, if this guy could be a little more consistent, he'd be a perennial all-star. You're in and you're out. So, I mean, this is really confusing. And it just goes back to the Yankees coaching, in my opinion. Yeah, and this is another great point. Matt Carpenter, I think it was $12 million for two years. I get he's 38, but... Six million dollars for this year. Instead, we give that to IKF. I would take Carpenter ten out of ten times over IKF. I mean, the yeah, bats that he would give. What's IKF giving you? Yeah. So, yeah. I and I mean that's been a reoccurring theme. What is IKF's role? 
And that's a great point. Matt Carpenter, if we had Matt Carpenter right now, I, I don't know if this stat still stands, but it was a few days ago. I think um, Playoff Tanaka tweeted it, that Matt Carpenter would have the second highest uh, OPS on the Yankees, um, you know, in 2023. It's, it's 881 right now, so I assume that would be, uh, yeah, up there. Yeah. And Matt Carpenter, you know, with all these guys hurt, imagine how much Matt Carpenter would be helping us right now. You could, you know, slide him in the middle of the order, bounce out of that lineup. Matt Carpenter would be helping us a lot. And I get you didn't really have a huge role for him, but, you know, you got to expect injuries are going to happen. And if we had Matt Carpenter right now, he'd be playing every day and he would be a real big help. Instead, they give that money to IKF who doesn't even have a role in this team. We've been saying it since the offseason. What's his role? Anthony Volpe is a shortstop. Josh Donaldson is, is the third base. I know he's injured. You know, and he, even with him injured, it, it's Peraza and um, uh, DJ LeMay's job. And sometimes we see Oswaldo in there as well. He doesn't have a role. The guy's playing center field. He's horrible out there. And I know he's made some, you know, nice diving catches, and I'll get him. I'll give him a lot of credit for that. You know, the guy's a winner, and well, you know, the guy wants to win. I should say, I wouldn't call him a winner, but he wants to win. He'll he'll do anything to help the team, and, and you know, he he's at least athletic out there. He's making these diving plays. He's making up for it a, a little bit. But I mean, you look at these catch probabilities: ninety percent, eighty percent, and these are plays he's diving on. Um, you know. IKF started 14 games in center field. Is IKF the – what are guys? IKF's not a center fielder. He doesn't He doesn't have a role on this team. And, yeah. you know, they should have got went out and got someone, you know, better than IKF. Um, and, you know, IKF's a contact hitter, Christian. And we brought IKF here to be a contact hitter, right, to put the ball in play, play good defense. So far with the Yankees – he hasn't really done either. I mean, the contact a little bit this year, but I believe this year he's batting under 200. All right, yeah. like what are what are we doing? And the thing with the Yankees going forward is this isn't working, Cashman. You got a ton of big games coming up, 11 games between the Blue Jays and the Rays, two of the best teams in the American League. You can't sit there and just keep rolling out the Willie Calhouns and, and the Franchies. You have to make changes. You have to call some guys up whether that's DFA Hicks and calling up a guy like Chaparro or doing this or doing that, you can't just run out there with the same team playing better opponents. You're, you're going to, you're going to get destroyed and, and come Memorial day, this team could be out of it, at least in the division. No, you made some really good points. I'll tell you, this team reminds me a lot of that 2021 second half team where we had like, Rudnett Odor batting third. I mean, Willie Calhoun batting fourth? What? And, Christian, the, the thing with Willie Calhoun that drives me absolutely insane, and I'll give Willie Calhoun some credit. He's picked it up the last few games, has, you know, gotten some hits. Um, so I hope he can and pick it up and, and, you know, get hot or something. But the thing that drives me nuts with Willie Calhoun is he doesn't play the outfield. He's played two games in right field. So we have a guy on our team who's basically almost the, you know, DH every day, unless we're playing a uh, a lefty pitcher on the mound. We basically have a DH, a set DH that we're running out there every day that can't hit. The DH role designated hitter is for a guy who you don't want in the field that can swing it with the bat. We have a designated hitter who can't hit. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, what? Uh, that has to be the most obvious example of how bad their depth is right now you go from john carlos stanton as your dh to willie calhoun how does that happen how is there no one else that's the dh i don't yeah i don't get it that's where i say brian cashman what are you doing how do you let that happen what is this team that you built yeah i mean you know, but I, I mean, I honestly don't know. You know, we're, we're beating up cash in the air. What is Hal Steinbrenner doing? He's the guy that keeps allowing this. And, you know, how does, like, Brian Cashman has to be the best salesman in the history of the world. 
because when Hal Steinbrenner calls him in for, you know, the, the meetings and stuff, I don't know how, how Brian Cashman, you know, gets himself out of this. I mean, the guy should have been a lawyer. I, how, do, how does he how does he use his get, get out of jail free card every time? I mean, because he it's feeds absolutely... the same bullshit that Boone feeds the fans, where they lie to everyone and they say everything's okay and it's April and we're the New York Yankees and look at our expected numbers. We've been a playoff team for the past however many years, but they never actually get it done. So. Yeah. And I guess that works on Hal Steinberg because he doesn't seem like the smartest guy. Yeah, and, and how about uh, – I don't know if you guys – yeah, I don't know if you guys saw it today, but Christian, how about Aaron Boone's comments? Let's let's touch on that for a bit. <laughs> uh, and... How do you say that? How do you lose 15-2 to two and in your press conference say that we're playing well towards the end? <laughs> stupidest thing. He's I an idiot for that. I'm, I'm losing my <laughs> mind here, guys. I'm losing my mind. Christian, I think I, te I texted you know, this. What Aaron Boone said is like getting a one out of a hundred on a <laughs> test. It's like it's like getting a one out of a hundred on a test, getting the last question right, and then come out and say, yeah, we finished well. <laughs> what? You, you still got like a, a, a whatever one per you got a one percent what you finished well, we finished well? strong so that's all that matters right forget about the first 99 questions you got the last one right that's what counts it's about heart it's about participation forget winning right that's the new Yankees philosophy yeah and, and their philosophy's been uh at least their hitting philosophy has been very just bad for, I mean, years now. The 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 philosophy of home run or nothing. There's no like it, it's such a one dimensional team, and we see it year in and year out. Where you know the Yankees, they'll bash themselves. They'll hit the most homers in the league. Come to the postseason, you face the Justin Verlanders, and they get shut down. So like. And we keep saying this, like, the definition of in insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, excuse me, and expecting a different result. And, like, I don't know why the Yankees, they, they just won't make any changes, like, whether it comes to the philosophy, whether it comes to getting rid of guys like Aaron Hicks and Isaiah kiner Falifa. I mean, Aaron Hicks has been done He's been done for like three years now, and he's still on this roster in 2023. You know, IKF, we saw IKF last year, Christian, for a whole season. IKF, I don't know how many play, games he played, but IKF had to play like 155 games, 150 games, something yeah. like that. We saw that yeah. for a whole season and the playoffs, and the guy's just not a good fit. You know, I, I, the guy's just not a good fit with the Yankees. And, and they they just keep running them out there. So it, it's like, it, it's just such a big problem. If something's not working, you have to fix it. And it, it, it seems like the Yankees just keep doing the same thing and expecting a, a different result. So, I mean, I don't know, but, you know, something has to change. And I'm trying to focus on, on the now. And, you know, obviously Christian, look, you call up a couple guys from AAA. You call up one guy from AAA. Is that going to make all the difference in the world? No. The bottom line is guys like Oswaldo Cabrera got to start hitting. The starters got to start hitting. You know, Torres has to start hitting. You know, Rizzo's kind of been slumping. You know, he has to start hitting, right? The starters have to be hitting. But you need to try something. You, you need to do something. And you can't just, you know, you got guys in AAA that are hitting. So you got to make changes. Yeah, I think the big word, urgency. And it's something that, like, no one does. Cashman doesn't do it. Boone doesn't do it. And even the players, I really don't see it from them. I get it's a long season, 162 games. But especially early on in the season and even last year in, like, those August games, it just seems like they're just checking off a box, completing games. And there's not really a sense of urgency. Like, we have to win. Yeah. We're eight games behind in the division, right? Cashman's not pulling any strings saying, 
who, who, who can help us win in the minors that we can bring up right now? Boone's making excuses in, in his press conferences, and the players don't really seem to be making any adjustments. So I get it's April. You don't have to put the full panic button mode on, but, I mean, at least do something. Yeah, and know. you got yeah you got to keep in mind, Christian, with the balanced schedule now that you don't you don't get as many head to head games. Um, so it's going to be tough to make up ground. So you know you got I think seven games here coming up against the Rays. I'm telling you right now, Christian, this is just more of a reason why the Yankees need to call up some guys, make some changes. You can't you can't plumble in those games. You can't go one and six. You can't go two and five. You really got to have a winning record in those games. And you're really kind of, it's tough. It's tough. And I don't know, there's obviously not right now one button the Yankees could hit to solve all of our problems. But maybe we could solve a couple, right? And that starts with calling some guys up from the minor leagues. You got Elijah Dunham, all three outfield positions. Christian, who would you rather see playing center field for the New York Yankees? Elijah Dunham? Or IKF, who's an infielder, like, like, come on. Yeah, Who would don't. you rather see at DH right now, Christian? Willie Calhoun or Andres Chaparro? Has eight home runs, batting like over 300 since April 8th in the minor leagues. All right, so that's Chaparro. the bottom line. You got to make changes. You just have to. Yeah. Hitting's bad right now. Let's move to the pitching side. We'll talk about the bullpen a little later, but starting off – with with our rotation cole's been great and that's a really good sign it's sort of gone under the radar under the radar storyline since they haven't been playing great but if this team gets hot i cannot wait ryan you had it as your hot take that he's going to win 20 games it's very possible yeah that that is maybe the one bright spot right now maybe the bullpen too but well the bullpen the bullpen's actually like if you look at the bullpen's numbers they're like one of the best, if not the best, bullpen in baseball. The bullpen's been very well. Garrett Cole's been, you know, very, 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 very good. Um, I was trying to look for a word, word other than phenomenal because I use that so much when I'm talking about Garrett Cole. But, um, you know, amazing, spectacular. Um, this is the best we've ever seen as a Yankee. And I like the bullpen. I, I think the bullpen is really, really good. Guys like Ian Hamilton – have really, really stepped up when we've needed them. Um, you know, going to the rotation, you know, I mean, you got Cole, you got Nestor, who's bounced, you know, he's gotten rocked up a bit, but he did start off the season very well. But, you know, the, the rotation's not totally helping the offense other than Cole. I mean, you know, Clark Schmidt with that offense against Dave yeah. Jacob DeGrom the other night, I mean, yeah, like – you know, I, I think I mean, Clark Schmidt is the one you you might have, you really should pull the plug on because you're guaranteeing a loss every five days, basically, with him on the mound. Yeah, I'm just talking about Clark for a bit because I don't – I could talk about him for a while. He's been terrible. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't hate him. I just hate what he's doing so, so much. How do you – you finally get your chance to be a star yeah. pitcher and – you That's have what's annoying. However, many start like the six worst starts of all time. The one against the Blue Jays wasn't that bad. No earned runs. Me and Ryan were at the game, but you still let up two homers. And every other start besides that has been terrible. I don't get how you do that. Like, what? What are you doing, Clark? Yeah, yeah. And Christian, another thing that I, I'd like to touch on that was I didn't actually see like many people talking about this. That drives me crazy is. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why Clark Schmidt gets to have a um, a personal catcher. He throws to Hickey like every time out there. And the other day, um, he uh, Trevino went three for four with a home run. And I get that Hickey and Trevino are a little bit similar in terms of offense. I think Trevino is, is a, uh, the better offensive player. But – I mean, really, he gets to, he has to throw to Higgy every time. Like we needed offense against Degrom. Like it just it doesn't make any sense to me. And the problem is, you know, uh, the problem is, and this just kind of goes back to the depth. However, I mean, the Yankees have gone through like fifty starting pitchers, so you know. But 
the Yankees really have no one that could replace Clark. And my kind of idea was going with an opener because if you look at it right now, Christian, the Yankees, in my opinion, have one of the best, if not the best, bullpen in baseball. The stats will back it up. Clark Schmidt hasn't gone through – he hasn't gone six innings this year. He barely – I think he's only gone through five, maybe once or twice. Clark Schmidt averages like three innings every start. He's basically an opener every time he's pitching. So if the Yankees like option Clark to have him work on his game – which Clark needs to do in AAA, and you call up a guy like Debbie Garcia, who's been used kind of as, as a long reliever, then you could basically do an opener like Debbie, and then you could have like King piggyback on and then go to like the Marinachos, Wandies, Holmes, etc. So that's something I think the Yankees should consider. But other than that, when you're thinking of a starting pitcher, they're not going to call a beater. He's, he's too young. He's only in double A, although he's been great. Or Matt Crook, he could be like an opener guy, very pitching very good in, in triple A. I mean, these are just kind of ideas. But when we're thinking of a starter, they don't really have anyone right now other than Clark. Yeah, I, you could almost treat Clark like an opener. I don't know if that would work, but instead of – like, n- there should never be a situation where he's going through the lineup for a third time. He had a great start against the Blue Jays, and then they let him do that, and he imploded. So uh, maybe just ha- tell Clark before the game, you're going three innings, or you're going once through the lineup, yeah. give it your all. Maybe that changes something. I don't know. Yeah, um, and Christian, yeah, one last thing here on Clark that I forgot to mention just now. I'll mention it now, though. I, I know, I you know, I think I know, uh, you know, and I'm just a fan. I'm watching the game. So, you know, take this however you want. But I think I know part of the problem with Clark Schmidt. He's too animated on the mound. And John Flaherty mentioned, was talking about what Garrett Cole said um, on Schmidt's second start of the season. Cole was basically saying, you know, one of the things with Schmidt is he's way too animated on the mound. He, he treats every pitch kind of like – like, like it's do or die. You know what I mean? Um, we saw it the other day. First and third, two outs against the Rangers. He gets the strikeout in the first inning, and he's whoa, slamming his hand into the glove. And it's like, dude, like, yeah, there's a time you get fired up in baseball. I want my players to be fired up. But especially as a starting pitcher, Christian, you need to know how to be relaxed out there. You need to know how to slow the game down how to calm yourself down so then you can better work on the hitters. And we see this with Clark Schmidt is his pitch mix, his pitch selection is not good. I mean, the other day through like three straight cutters to Marcus Simeon. And I think that's a result of him being, you know, too like crazy on the mound. Um, So, but especially as a starting pitcher, you need to be relaxed out there. Yeah, and that's also why I think he gets so rattled. He's treating every pitch like it's life or death. He lets up a home run or someone makes an error. He just collapses on yes, the mound. Yes, we see. How many times have we seen Clark Schmidt do this? Like, yeah, and I mean, even even against Texas, I, when they were down like I don't know, five nothing, and he got a strikeout, and he's off the mound, dude. It's five nothing. That's not yeah. good. Why are you? Why are we going crazy? And this is, all, this is a good point. He's right because Brito is like technically an opener right now with how he's been pitching. So, I mean, really, you need to get Rodon and Sevy back. Yeah, and get these guys out of the bullpen. Sevy is um, making a rehab start, I believe, Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, so so that's, that's going to be really nice. Um, and the only other guys, Herman, had some good starts, had some bad ones. Yeah, I mean, Christian, it's really amazing because the rotation actually hasn't been totally, you know, bad. When you look at the overall numbers, I think a huge part of that is because of Garrett Cole and Nestor Cortez has been roughed up, but his first three starts were really good. So I think that's a big, um, you know, plays big on the numbers. But, like, if you really, like, sit down and think about it, like, especially the back end of the rotation hasn't been good, and the offense has been just – dreadful and you sit there you look at the the Yankees record they're 15 and 14 so I mean I I mean I I think that is is pretty uh amazing in, in itself to be honest with you 
Yeah. No, I the rotation I I think it's been good because you forget about a guy like Clark who's gonna be out of the rotation and Brito, you forget about him too, because they'll be replaced. The rotation's gonna be good once we get our guys back. No doubt. And the bullpen has been good. And we also have guys that are coming back in the bullpen, right? Like Kane yeah. Lee, Trevino. So Lasaga. Well, why is it good? So I like the pitching right now. I like it a lot. Yeah. The lineup, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just some guy, you know, some guys that the Yankees might call up, you know, if, if Judge does go on the IL, just so you, if some of you aren't familiar. I think it'd probably be, you know, a guy like Elijah Dunham, um, Andre Straparo. I a lot of fans have been pushing for him, myself included. Um Estevan Floriel, who I know many Yankees fans are like, whoa, he has been hitting very well in AAA, but that's really nothing no, new. He always I... does that. Um, but the thing with Floriel is, like, if they call him up, they can DFA him right away. Like, they can't DFA a guy like Dunham. They just use one of his options. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, those are some guys. But, Christian, I mean, I got to be honest with you, like, I'm really, really worried, and I think if you called, like, a couple guys up or if you made some changes or you DFA'd Hicks, we're getting Bader back, so that's big. big. So if we get a guy like Bader back in and you call up an Andre Chaparro and Elijah Dunham and we have Jake Bowers, right, who's not going to go on the IL his day-to-day, your lineup gets a little bit better. The bottom half of the lineup gets a little bit better. The more players you get back, the, the more players you, you call up in AAA, your lineup gets a little bit better than what it is right now. But, I mean, the thing that really frustrates me, and, and I do, I mean, I guess, you know, Cashman did call up Bowers, so we give him credit there. But, um, you know, the thing that really frustrates me is, like, Cashman, come on. You got Hicks. You got IKF. Like, let's make some changes here. We got a ton of games, big games coming up. And, Christian, I, I can't sit here right now and say I'm feeling good. I, I mean, I got to be honest with you. I'm feeling really nervous for these games coming up because I know it's, you know, April ended and, and the, these games are in uh, beginning of May, middle of May. But especially with the balanced schedule, the Yankees are eight games out of first place. They have to jump four teams. Well, really three, but they're tied with the Red Sox. They have to jump three teams. These are big games, and I, I can't say I'm feeling confident right now with the way the Yankees are playing baseball. I got to be honest, I'm pretty worried. Yeah, I, we could really, really use Judge for the Rays series. I'm hoping he doesn't go on the IL because that gets scary. I'm just yeah. I'm already jumping ahead to the probables. Johnny Brito is supposed to open up. Um, in the trop on Friday, I feel like they might go for a bullpen game there. Do they really want to run out Johnny Brito? I, especially with how the offense has been going and, and how good the Rays pitching staff is, I think they might try and run an opener there. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Like, to be honest, another thing that concerns me, I mean, you know, I, I don't know – the total numbers, because I don't, you know, last year, I, I don't know if the Yankees hit or not in the trap, but I know, like, the last, like, in recent years, the Yankees don't hit very well at all at the trap. So I don't know if that shifted a little bit, because last year, I don't really remember how they did in the trap. Um, but the Yankees really struggled with scoring runs there. Um, and the Rays always seem to play the Yankees well, especially in the trap. So, uh, in the in the toilet park. So, uh yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's like, I'm trying to look for some good news here, and it's like, there's no good news. I, I mean, I mean, we everyone was excited for Jake Bowers the other night. Okay, I was pumped. I said, yes. I texted you, Christian. I said, let's go. Bowers is up. First sitting, he makes an absolutely incredible play. Credit to him. I mean, maximum effort. Didn't even care if you know. Didn't even care if he got smashed by the wall. He makes the catch, <clears throat> and, you know, he got injured. He's only day-to-day, but it's like – and then we see Aaron Hicks just jog out to left field, and it's like we can't catch a break. Yeah, I mean, can't get rid of Aaron Hicks, but I, 
that, that's kind of what I like about bringing up these young guys. They're going to play with that. Yes. That, that spark, that attitude. Um, so yes. I, I, and I hope Jake Bowers does get a chance because I'm really excited for him. I, I do think he'd change something. Cause I know um, people have said that he hasn't been great in the majors before he hasn't been great in the minors. So it's not like he's an Estevan Florial that always tears it up. No, like this was out of the norm this year. Yeah. It looks and, like he made an adjustment. Yeah, and, and, and Christian, there. I don't know if you caught this, but on the uh, pregame yesterday, he was talking to Meredith, and they were talk- – she was telling, asking him, like, how does your approach change this year? What's led to your success? And he said – you know, he said he gave it all, like, to the Yankees, like, coaching staff. Like, they've been talking together, and I know the Yankees coaching staff is, you know, a lot of people are like, eh, I'm that. But, you know, the Yankees coaching staff does get some things right every now and You know, they do get some things right. They get some things wrong. Um, they get a lot of things right. They get a lot of things wrong. But especially in the bullpen, they get some things right. But, um, you know, it, it looks like definitely Bowers has made a big adjustment in his game. Um, especially with his swing. So I'm really excited for Bowers. And hopefully Bowers, I mean, he has nine home runs in AAA. Hopefully he'll give the Yankees more of that power that they've been missing because when you don't got Giancarlo in your lineup, you don't got Judge, you're losing so much power. And the Yankees lineup is kind of built on hitting home runs. So I'm hoping with that short fork and with Jake Bowers. Now, obviously, you know, we don't want to get Bowers. We don't want Bowers to swing for the fences or anything, but I'm hoping Bowers could run into some home runs and, and that would really help the Yankees offense out instead of, you know, trying to manufacture a run, right? Um, you can just hit, you can get three on, on one swing, um, you know, and I, I do give the Yankees credit. They've been trying some things offensively, a little bit more of a small ball approach, which they definitely should keep up uh, in, in the meantime. Um, but, you know, that just brings up another point, like why we should call up Andre Chaparro. Because, you know, like you said, Christian, on a video, a last video, Andre Shaparo does have some swing and, miss, swing and miss in his game. No doubt about that. He's going to run into some homers. You can't tell me. You can't tell me if Andre Shaparo plays, you know, 10, 15 games in the big leagues, he's not going to hit a home run. Like, he's going to run into some. And, you know, you have him and Bowers. You got a power righty at DH. Got Bowers in the outfield. You got a lot more power in that lineup. Yeah, no, I'm for that. Um, uh, do you have anything else before we wrap it up? Anything we missed that you want to touch on? No, I mean, I, I think we we touched on it all. We kind of, you know, broke down the, the whole team. Oh, one last thing. One last thing here. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have noticed, Christian, um, a ton of Yan- former Yankees are playing so well this season. Joey Gallo, Sonny Gray, Jorge Mateo, former Yankees number one prospect, has like five homers. He's batting like 350. Ezekiel Duran, and we traded to the Rangers in the Joey Gallo trade, killed us this series. Um, so that's just, you know, Tyro that's, Estrada. Tyro Estrada, yeah. That's that's really concerning to say, right? That That's that's concerning to say, um, you know, it really is because it, that does not reflect well on the Yankees. You know, of course, there's always going to be a guy here and there, but when there's multiple guys playing this well on different teams, it, it's not yeah, great. I mean, it, even even Nathan Avaldi shutting shutting the Yankees. Yeah, out. like yeah, it's just it, it's not a great look. It, it really isn't. Um, it's, it really isn't. So, you know, we don't totally know the Yankees coaching staff. Like I just said, said before, it seems like there's a lot of things the Yankees coaching staff does really well, especially when it comes to the bullpen. Like where you'll say like, okay, like Christian, I don't know if there's any team in the big leagues that can handle a bullpen better than the Yankees in terms of, you know, analyzing a pitcher, finding a guy to put in. The, I mean, Ian Hamilton, Ian Hamilton's been, like, one of our best relievers. Who would have thought of him, you know? Like, when it comes to that. But there's also a lot of things the Yankees coaching staff, like, doesn't do well. Whether that's coaching, whether that's philosophy, we totally don't know. We're not in there. Yeah, Ian Kennedy. Ian Kennedy was kind of a long time ago. But, yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's just not a great look. For my closing thoughts, Christian, 
this is kind of what I'll say. You know, I'm concerned, and, you know, I, I really think the Yankees need to make changes, whether that's just calling up Andres Chapar or that's it. We're done. We don't need to call both of these guys up, perhaps, although I would like to, even if it's just one guy. Put out your best lineup. You know, you can't be benching, you know, Volpe the other day when we had no offense, like, against DeGrom. You got to put out your best lineup. We got huge games in front of us. I don't want to see, you know, any of our starters like a Rizzo or Torres or Alemayu on the bench. Play your best guys and make some changes. And, you know, we're just going to have to hope some guys get hot and, and wish for the best. I mean, that's all we can really do right now unless, you know, Cashman goes out there and makes a trade. But those are really, really hard to do, you know, in the beginning of May. So, you know, teams are still evaluating themselves. So. We'll see, um, but I think we just got to hope for the best right now, and that's really all we can do. Yeah, I have one final question, Um, two questions. Do you think this is rock bottom, and will the Yankees go below 500? Do I think this is rock bottom? It's hard to tell because you you don't really know. (sighs) To be honest, it could be. I mean, who knows? Maybe the Yankees just got, you know, Rizzo, LeMayu, they get hot. And, you know, the Yankees kind of, you know, play 500 or so, maybe a little bit better for the next month. They get their guys like Big G right on back, and there we go. That's it. Could be that's one scenario. Second scenario is the Yankees just, they don't have the depth right now at all. The starters playing right now are are just, they're not good enough. Um, And, you know, the Yankees facing some really, really tough opponents. I mean, their only really light half in the schedule is the athletics. Um, other than that, the rest of the month's kind of tough. But um, Or the Yankees, you know, playing these really tough teams could just really plummet, and then that could be rock bottom. And, and we're looking here near the beginning of June, Memorial Day, and this Yankee team, five, six, seven games under 500, and you're starting to think, you know, do the Yankees, you, what, what's the deal here? Are they going to sell? What's going to happen? So I don't know if it's rock bottom. It could be. It might not be. It's hard to answer. We're going to have to see how these games play out. Yeah, I think I think we're going to get one more week of kind of just medi- mediocrity and then Monday against the Athletics, that series, it's going to turn around. The guys are going to start coming back and they're going to get in their groove, and they're going to be the Yankees again, and they're going to work their way up. I don't know. I'll be honest. At the beginning of the year, I thought they were the the AL East winners without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'll be honest. Like, forget no, about how yeah, they're playing right now fully no, you can't. Yeah, even if the Yankees were playing, like, good baseball, like, and I'm not saying here, like, you know, unless the Yankees got off to the same start they did last year. But, like, even if the Yankees were playing their normal baseball, I still don't think you could say they're a lock for the East. I mean, look how – look at the Rays, right? Look how well they've been playing. Toronto looks like they've been, you know, gotten better. Um, you know, although Toronto, you know, when it comes down the stretch, they seem to always fumble each year. But, you know, Toronto looks really good. They have a lot of starters, and they look really good. But even if the Yankees were playing great ball, I, I don't even know if you could say they're a lock. And right now, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just – I'm not even thinking about the division. Right now, you just got to worry about yourself, take it day by day, and win, and win ball games. Yeah, the final thing I have to say, and I don't like doing this, but I'm going to – Astros are also one game above 500. And when, when we're in October, and look at last year, when we got swept by the Astros – no one cared that the Yankees were the best team in baseball um, to, to begin the season. That doesn't matter, right? Like, who you are to begin the season really does not matter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And, yeah. You, you got to finish. It, it's about how you are going into October. So they definitely have to pick it up. But this is not even close yeah. to the end for the Yankees. Like they yeah. Have... We'll, we'll leave it. Yeah. We'll leave this on a high note. You know, <laughs> Baseball is such a long season. You play so many games. 
And especially us as Yankee fans, we lose a game and we want everyone on the team fired and we're ready to rip our hair out. Baseball is such a long season. The Yankees came back one time, 14 and a half games behind the Red Sox in 1978, won the division, game 162. Baseball is such, such a long season. There's so many ups and downs, so many things. I mean, even 2021, and we're not hoping to have the same season as we did in 2021, obviously. But, I mean, the Yankees were, like, below 500. They were, like, 8-13. and 13. They were just flat-out awful. And, you know, they found their way into the playoffs. So, baseball is such a long season. You play so many games. And it's the beginning of May. So, even if the Yankees fumble, they're still going to have many opportunities to pick themselves up. Although, the more you lose – the harder it gets, but the Yankees are going to have a lot of opportunities. Yeah, um, that's all I got. If you're still watching, like, subscribe. Appreciate you watching the stream. Yep. Let's go, Yanks. Let's go, Yanks.